Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the spoil board and table setup that I have for my Avid CNC router. I've been working on this for quite some time and it's kind of stopped me from actually really using the router. So I think I'm kind of at the point right now to where I'm going to stop making any more modifications and just kind of use it as is. So in this video, I just kind of want to give you an overview of what I did, what some of the decisions I made were, and all of the mistakes I made because I made a lot of mistakes in kind of designing this thing because it is kind of different. So anyway, let's take a look at what I was trying to accomplish and what it looks like right now. So here is a closer look at the setup. I'm kind of calling this a hybrid setup because up front I have an aluminum T-Track table and in the back I have a traditional MDF table with some T-slot tracks in it. Now the reason I did this was because I wanted a better way for secure work holding for doing like metal, um, you know, aluminum, stuff like that. So I have this um, big Kurt DX6 vise that sits um, over here on this side and that can be clamped directly into the aluminum table. And then I have the wood table back here for more of the traditional work holding stuff. You know, you can screw directly into this, things like that. Now these um, aluminum T-slot plates I got from a company called World of Clamping. I actually found them on eBay and they had um, some good configurations that worked out well. There's two plates here. Each one of these is about 16 inches deep or exactly 16 inches deep and 24 inches wide. So the two of these span the entire 48 inch width of the table. What I did have to do is I went through and machine some mounting holes and I actually used um, the Avid CNC to do that. So I machined all these mounting holes and I have additional supports underneath here. So normally this table only has like what one, two, three, four cross members going across. This table in and itself has one, two, three, four, five just for this little section and it's clamped into it in three of those locations. I couldn't clamp into the front and the back uh, because just the way everything lined up I'd be kind of cutting this T-slot in half and it just really wasn't worth it. So I'll get into some of the mounting later but generally speaking is I wanted to have kind of a nice solid aluminum up front that I could use for traditional clamping methods. So this is kind of just like a larger version of the bed that I have on the Tormach. And then my more traditional clamping is in the back and these are surfaced to where they are level with each other. So here's a better look at the side. So you can see all these cross members. You can see the five of them across and how they fit into the actual table. And of course we can get a better look at how the vise sits on this table. I like the configuration. I like how everything is lined up. Um, this all is nice and this will work great. The main problem that I had, and this was um, a bit of an oversight, so oversight number one, was these cross members really don't like peeing this close to each other. Why couldn't you just stack up this as a purely solid piece? Well, the way that these attach is here's what the end of one of these looks like. It has these little um, notches or pockets machined into them. This little fastener slides inside and that attaches to this rail. Well, the problem with that is to actually screw these in, you need to be able to get some sort of driver in between. Well, there's really not that much room in between each one of these and trying to kind of drive it from the side and get your hand in a space that big is really, really difficult. It's so difficult that actually attaching these five beams took me an entire weekend to get all of this together and get the top on here. To give you some perspective, it took me less time to build this whole machine. It was really, really difficult. And there was times where I was literally kind of screwing it like that and you're just really not going to get that much torque off of it. So this was really difficult and I don't really know a different way that I would have done it, but just keep that in mind. Getting these cross members spaced that closely was just really difficult. So here is what the back half looks like with the traditional MDF. Um, this is a three quarter inch MDF top. Um, I have these cross junctions here. I've got one, two, 
and then three and four, and that allows me to do a 36 inch track here, a 36 inch track there, and then these are 19 inches and 19 inches. I actually had a 24, two 24 inch pieces on hand, cut them down to 19. The reason that I didn't do 18 on them was just how the holes were spaced up. If I would have cut it at 18 inches, it would have um, cut one of these holes right in the middle. So I just made it 19. So I actually did think about that. The layout's kind of weird. Um, I think I got a little bit too into how I was gonna lay it out and I didn't really think enough about how I was gonna actually use it. So it's good for putting a piece of material in a corner, but clamping, it's kind of weird. If you have something in the middle, you can't really clamp it. So I think what I'm gonna eventually do is some shorter pieces, like in the middle, something like that, or maybe a couple pieces across here, because you really need something else to be able to clamp the other side of the workpiece. For clamping and mounting, I got a bunch of these various pieces. These are also PowerTech brand. Um, and you know, so I can do something like that, mount this over here, you know, so it gives me a nice indication. I got some clamps. The problem is it really only clamps kind of this bottom left corner unless the piece is bigger. So like I said before, I need to do some kind of other tracks in here to make this a little bit more useful. Um, the other thing that I did was I cut out these little pockets over here so you can actually slip the little, um, I guess, T-nuts or T-screws. I don't know what these are. But you can actually slip these in here and there's going to be another one back in the back. More on that later. And then these extend past. Now, normally you would just extend this past the table, but this guy was here. So I had the option whether I could do this or I could actually machine into the aluminum. So I did this instead. It was a lot easier just to kind of stop the track short. So that is why this doesn't extend all the way past. So here's another big mistake that I made. On the bottom of all these pieces, which are very nice, they're a little bit expensive, but I didn't have to go out and make them. They have this nice little rib and it's meant to fit inside the channel, but my T-tracks are too far down below the table. So I did this in the wrong order. I actually cut the T-tracks first, then surface this whole thing down. And when I was cutting the T-tracks, I didn't really think about the surfacing until later. So I was like, you know what? I'll just put these further down in and that'll give me more um, material on top to surface down because I'm still going to surface this down to the bare aluminum just so this whole thing is perfectly flat. So I gave myself that extra little bit of lip here. And unfortunately, it means that the kind of keying or indexing feature of these don't work. So when I bolt this up, it might not be straight. And I think it's like 30 or 50 thousandths off. So these whole tracks have to come up if I wanna use that feature. So what I think I'm gonna end up doing is um, probably just ordering some thin ABS or polypropylene or something like that and just laser cutting little shims that sit underneath all these tracks so that I can raise the tracks up so these actually fit in the slot. So what I really, really should have done is surface this whole thing off and then machine the channels just so this sat right below the surface. So that was another big issue that I had. So I'm currently on the back side of the table. Here is the back of the machine. And I ran into kind of another issue. I wanted this track to run kind of off so that I could be able to insert these little um, hardware from this side. And it turns out that this is about the end of travel for the machine and I wasn't able to get it further past there. So simple solution, I 3D printed this little piece, which allows me to set this inside and then use a Forstner bit so that I can do that same little cutout to where I can kind of sneak this inside. So let's talk about yet another oversight. 
this aluminum T-track plate is about 0.8 inches thick, whereas the 3 quarter inch MDF is about 0.745. That means there is about a 55 thou difference between these two with the table being taller. So that meant that I would have to surface this down by 55 thousandths of an inch, which is quite a bit of material to remove, and I didn't want to really cut into the table that much. So the solution for that was to raise up this MDF table so that it is set up off the table so then I could machine it down and get these two flat. So the solution that I had for that was to create little spacers. So where the table bolts into the frame of the machine, I created these little shims. These are 3D printed shims. I have two different styles. I have this one right here, which is a pretty traditional shim. It just has like a little bit of a um, chamfer on the leading edge. And it basically just slides in between the rails and then just raises it up. These other ones are for these little um, angle brackets that I bought. It just kind of slides on there like that. And these are located kind of on the outside edge along this front leading edge, and they just help kind of space everything up. So I print out a ton of these. Thankfully, they're relatively easy and cheap to print, um, but basically this whole thing is up on spacers to bring it up high enough so I didn't have to cut into the aluminum table. So let's talk about the transition between the aluminum table and the MDF table. So originally the plan was to do a cross member here, bolt in the end of that, do another cross member right there and bolt into that. But as I quickly learned, you couldn't really have two cross members right against each other because you couldn't actually bolt them in to the rest of the frame. So what I ended up having to do is basically leave this edge kind of floating because here's the cross member all the way back there. Um, granted, I could have moved this cross member closer, but I actually used the original table layout and just kind of cut off the front side of it. So I left the original um, cross member there and there's another one way back in there. So from here to here, this whole thing is just kind of floating or was floating. That's where these little angle brackets come in. There is a cross member right here, which half of it spans against the aluminum table and the other half spans against this MDF table. So what I did is I added six of these along the length of the 45 inches and then that's where these little um, spacers came in. So those are all along here and then those are bolted or screwed um, directly into the underneath side. So there is no flex and the end of this is actually really, really solid, so that's good. I wasn't really too worried about the aluminum since it has plenty of support, but obviously the MDF could flex on the end a little bit. So another thing that I had to consider is since this whole bed was elevated off of these cross supports, this end section over here was kind of just hanging. It wasn't resting against these. So I ended up using more of these little shims and these guys and I use the additional angle brackets to put an angle bracket here and here that helps support the end of the table. And then there's shims underneath here and here to keep the end of this table from kind of bowing down. So this is actually quite solid. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. It was just a lot of little changes and little tweaks here and there and a lot of extra work. So this is the overview of my really strange and poorly thought out hybrid table design. Um, there's a subreddit that I really like that is um, awful taste but great execution. I think maybe this kind of applies. I think the execution was about as good as I could have done given some of the design choices on this. Um, I think the aluminum table up front is going to be nice. Um, I'm also, I didn't mention, but I am adding a fog buster to this setup. Um, you saw a previous video where I had a mount to it. So having something that will be friendly for coolant up front um, is nice. Having a nice solid place to mount the vise is nice. Um, you know, MDF just isn't really a dimensional material. Once I face this aluminum down, I will have a nice flat surface to deal with for the vise. Um, the MDF 
is another story. So I think um, what I'm gonna do from here is just kind of use it as is, take some notes on what I don't like, what I do like, and this will most likely evolve. Um, thankfully, I think these plates will you know, still be perfectly fine. I can still incorporate these into a design. The vise I'll definitely use. So I didn't really spend that much money here that will be wasted. Um, this T-Track might get changed around a little bit, but it's relatively inexpensive. So. We'll see how this whole thing goes. Um, I do this video not as a example of something that you should do and follow, and that's why I didn't do a lot of, um, you know, kind of the build of this. I kind of just did this as a warning, if anything, to show people that this is actually kind of tricky. Splitting the table into two distinct tables has a lot of um, interesting challenges and a lot of downsides to it. So something to keep in mind if you're doing something like this. Hello, honey. Here is my dog, honey. Do you have fun outside? Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you got some information out of this. Um, for all these little pieces and stuff, check the Amazon descriptions down below. I have pretty much all of this stuff linked up if you're interested in, in any of it. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out my Facebook page for any updates and see you next time. doing? Oh, it's my boogies. Yeah.